In this video, we're going to examine how the ESXi host delivers memory to virtual machines. And we're also going to talk about what happens when the ESXi host starts to run low on memory. But first, let's start out with some of the basics here. So here we see our two virtual machines represented by our little blue rectangles. And they're running on the same host, which means they're sharing the host's physical memory with each other. So when a virtual machine uh, needs memory, when it launches some sort of application, let's say, the guest operating system is going to allocate what's called guest physical memory to that VM, to that application. Right? The guest operating system is going to say, hey, I've got four gigs of memory. Let me dedicate some of this memory to this particular application. And that's called guest physical memory. But the guest doesn't really have physical memory. It doesn't really have its own dedicated memory chip. Right? In reality, what's going to happen is the guest has allocated a certain amount of memory. And when it allocates memory to an application, those memory pages are mapped back to memory pages on actual host physical memory. So don't let the term guest physical memory throw you. Just think that's the memory that the guest operating system thinks is physical. And as applications launch, the guest operating system allocates memory pages, which are then mapped back to actual memory pages on the host physical memory, our real physical memory. So this is how the ESXi host efficiently shares memory. It's only going to give each virtual machine the memory that it actually needs at that particular moment. And there's another way that our host becomes even more efficient, by deduplicating identical memory pages. This is called transparent page sharing. Or as I sometimes call it, memory deduplication. Transparent page sharing allows identical memory pages to only be stored once. Right, so let's assume these two virtual machines in blue are running the same application, SQL, and they're running it on the same operating system. And they're both uh, have memory pages allocated to this SQL server. Right. Well, there's a good chance that on the host level, some of these memory pages from these similar virtual machines are going to be identical. And if there are identical memory pages, the ESXi host will recognize that and it'll only store one copy of those memory pages. And it'll map both virtual machines to that one copy. So you can see in this particular example, we cut down the memory usage by half right, for those two particular memory pages. Imagine if it was 20 SQL servers running on the same host, how much savings we could get then. So that's what transparent page sharing is. It's simply deduplication for memory. It runs all the time. You know, it doesn't just kick in when there's contention. It runs constantly. Um, and you don't have to do anything to enable it. Ballooning, on the other hand, doesn't run constantly. This is something that only happens when memory contention occurs. So if we look at our host physical memory, now we've gotten to a point where almost all of that host physical memory is in use. And let's say, for example, on our, our virtual machine, in our blue rectangle, one of the applications is closed. Well, the guest operating system is going to recognize that that application closed, and it's going to mark those memory pages as free. In the guest physical memory, it'll do that. However, the guest operating system doesn't know that it's a virtual machine. And it's not going to inform my ESXi host that anything has changed. Right. So now the ESXi host is under the false impression that those memory pages are still required. So now we're wasting memory in the ESXi host. And when the ESXi host gets to a certain threshold where there's not enough memory left, it'll kick off a memory reclamation process called ballooning. The VM kernel is going to use VMware tools to reach inside of our guest operating systems, inside of our virtual machines. It's going to use a driver in VMware tools, and you might want to make a note of this for the VCP exam. That driver is called VM 
MEM CTL, the VM MEM CTL driver. So the VM kernel is going to reach into that virtual machine using VMware tools and it's going to blow up this balloon. That's why it's called ballooning. It's going to take that memory back and maybe some more. It's going to take that memory and give it back to the ESXi host. It's reclaiming that memory that's no longer required by the guest operating system. And so now these green memory pages disappear and hopefully the memory pressure disappears along with it. And if that's what happens, then the balloon is going to be deflated and that memory is given back to the guest operating system. This is normal. You can expect to see some ballooning in your environment. The pro it becomes a problem if the ballooning activity is constant. Right? If you have continuous ballooning activity, that means the ESXi host can't reclaim enough memory. Right? Can't reclaim enough memory. I think of ballooning activity is kind of like there's a hole in the bottom of your boat and you're trying to take little cups of water and throw them over the side. Well at a certain point you're not going to be able to get enough cups of water out of that boat fast enough to keep it from sinking. Right? That's kind of like ballooning. Ballooning is, is taking those memory pages back but if it's taking those back and it's still running out of memory we have to take more aggressive steps and that's memory compression. Memory compression is the next step along the line. So if memory contention continues to occur and it starts to get worse and worse, at a certain threshold, memory compression will kick in. And the VM kernel will look at memory pages and see which memory pages can be compressed. And it'll compress the contents of memory. And it'll only do it on memory pages where it can save 50%. So now, these memory pages have been compressed. And if you've ever compressed a file with WinZip or something like that before, you know that it takes a little time to compress it, and it takes a little time to decompress it. Right? And anytime my virtual machines want to access those compressed memory pages, they have to be uncompressed first. So this isn't without its drawbacks. This isn't really a win for us. It's just trying to keep its head above water at this point. And if memory compression is not enough, we go to even more severe measures, like host level swapping. It's kind of the last resort of the ESXi host. Right? So now, this is like the boat is now filling up with water, and you're, you're putting out the life rafts. The host level swapping uh, is <clears throat> the absolute last resort of the ESXi host. So let's talk a little bit about the mechanics of it before we get into the actual impact. Here's a virtual machine, VM1. It's got a 2 gig memory reservation and it's got a 4 gigs of allocated memory. When this VM is booted up, a vSwap file will be dynamically created. And the vSwap file is going to be equal to the allocated memory minus the reservation. Now, any memory that is reserved is guaranteed for this virtual machine and we don't need to account for that with our vSwap file. So 4 gigs allocated minus 2 gigs reservation equals a 2 gig vSwap file. Virtual machine 2 is a little bit different. It's been allocated 2 gigs of memory. It has no reservations. So 2 gigs allocated minus 0 reservations equals 2 gigs of vSwap space when this VM powers on. As soon as you power off the VM, the vSwap space is perched. No longer required. That file is deleted. So now we've gotten to this kind of final threshold of memory contention. Right? The ESXi host is really starving for memory at this point, so it initiates host level swapping. And each of these virtual machines is going to be entitled to a certain amount of physical memory. It might not match the amount of memory that they were allocated, though. For example, maybe VM1 is going to get 3 gigs. Right? It's definitely going to get 2 gigs because of its reservation. VM2 has no reservation, so it's guaranteed nothing. And then they're going to fight over the remaining capacity. And they have an equal number of shares, so they each get 1 gig of what's left. 
Well, neither of them have their full allocated memory at this point available. So when the gas operating system is expecting to see four gigs of memory, well, the, the ESXi host is going to step in and say, okay, we'll store three gigs worth of these memory pages on real memory, but anything beyond that is going to be stored on this vSwap file. And that vSwap file is going to be significantly slower than memory, even if you put it on SSD. So in review, memory usage within a VM is mapped back to physical memory on the host. As the guest operating system gives out those memory pages to applications, they're eventually mapped back to the physical memory, the host physical memory. As those VMs stop using memory pages, the ESXi host is unable to detect this, so eventually it's going to have to reclaim this memory using ballooning. And to do ballooning, we've got to have VMware tools. That's why it's a best practice to always have VMware tools on your virtual machines. So the occasional ballooning activity is normal. But if ballooning doesn't relieve the pressure, it's going to be continuous. And eventually, memory compression will kick in. And then if that's still not enough, host-level swapping stops starts, and we're going to use that vSwap file. Transparent page sharing or memory deduplication is used all the time. It's not only used when there's contention, it's used constantly to deduplicate identical memory pages.